Searching podcasts for Dave and one more time. This is the Dave and Juan More Time Podcast. Not to be confused with the Dave and Juan All You Can Eat Buffet or the Dave and Juan More Time School of Croquet Etiquette. Now, you may not agree with the thoughts and opinions of Dave and Juan, and that's okay. I mean, you'll be wrong, but that's your right as an American. Hey, some of you are Atlanta Falcons fans. You do you. But for the rest of Clear Thinking America, this is Dave and Juan. And three. Number two. And follow that with a one. Woohoo! Yes, indeed, America, America. Say no more. Actually, say as much as you want. Hey. We can't really hear you, but you just need to know you. You're welcome. Absolutely welcome. What are they welcome for, Juan? Well, just for us being here, for one thing. (laughs) That's right. Hi, y'all. How you doing? I'm Dave. I'm Juan. And this is Dave and Juan. More time. There you go. There you go. Gonna kick it right off. Right off. Uh, right off the bat. Uh, this episode, and uh, wish my mom Liz. Uh, I hope she feels better. Speedy recovery. She is. Uh, and I'm guessing if this airs on Monday, I I'd, I hope she's home. But uh, she's spending some time at the luxurious uh, Thibodeau General. It's a nice past- hospital. For the past few days, um, just we, we, you and I were talking about yeah. what what eventually, and and I love my mom, and she's probably if she's don't don't yell at the iPad as you watch this, mom. Cause, but let me give a, a little hint to all of you out there: at w- whatever your age, whether you are, you know, in your teens or your eighties, if you are having discomfort, severe discomfort. For a prolonged period of time that stretches throughout the day, tell somebody. Yeah. Just say it. No matter if they yeah, work. I, I just dropped my wife off at the after hours clinic and told her she'd have to catch a ride home because I need to get back to do the podcast. <laughs> well, all right. Handle that as you will. But, yeah. uh, but uh, so hopefully the good folks at, um, at uh, Thibodeau uh, General are t- taking Taking care of Liz, along with my sisters. Uh, so I'm checking. Feel guilty, right? I'm I'm six hours away, and I had to be gone for work all last week, and I got to go for work all this week. So I uh, I'm going to try to be there this weekend. So look out, Thibodeau. I'm on the way. Yeah, it hurts, and you were saying stuff she has. Well, I've had that. It is it's right. painful. Various various things, but one of them is, uh, and as one has in, apparently yeah. in common with my mom, one of the things was a hiatal hernia. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even know and, what that was. I had to look no, that up. It, yeah. And basically, it's you've got a hernia somewhere above your stomach. So that a mm-hmm. small, and I'm not trying to get gross, it's not really gross. Right. So it's right. Just, you know, um, a small portion of your stomach will push True. through that. Yeah. And it's up, you know, everybody thinks their heart is, you know, the center or your your left chest which your heart's more in the center of your chest i think correct but that's it's above your stomach is so that's where the hiatal hernia it presents it presents as heart trouble like the exact you you kind of think it's it's something with a heart and it's and when i had it now for some people certain foods will cause it Mm -hmm. i it it was just random for me i don't know so you could be sitting there and, and those always, of you, and though uh, hang on, those of you that are uh, what's the phrase, psychosomatic or whatever, those of you that uh, <laughs> don't don't start, you know, we're not, we're not, don't, don't start feeling your chest, taking your pulse. No, I just, I just, we're just going to point out that that I think I was explaining to to Juan before we went on uh, what my mom was, uh, one of the yeah. things my mom was dealing with, and he's like, oh, I had that if one. That, if you've ever had acid reflux, yeah. It's like that on steroids because okay. it, it you learn exactly how long it takes your food to digest mm. because that's about how long it hurts oh, where it's geez. squeezing okay. through that and there's nothing you can do. Let's just like I said, let's just hope. So uh, I hope your mom gets over that quick. My my myself, we were uh, we 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 kid about that about the uh, the dietary possible dietary changes, and uh, again, here's another uh, health health tip from 
everybody out there. Now, granted, I'm probably, I don't know if I'm as guilty as my mom on this, but, or, or my family, maybe it's just the way my family kept. So my mom doesn't like drinking water, mm. right? Do you drink water, much water? You got a bottle in front of you. Okay. Is that since yeah. the hiatal hernia? <laughs> yeah. Um, my mom likes coffee as we all do, but on any given day, on any, any normal day, way more coffee, maybe no water. So, um, you know, that's probably just saying, you know, mix in a water every now and then probably. Well, it, you know, does a body good. I'm not a doctor, although I do play one on, on, uh, on podcasts from now and then, but, uh, so anyway, leave it at, leave it at that. Feel better soon, Liz. Um, let's see. We're talking what? about dietary challenges. So yesterday again, since my wife is sick, you know, I'm left to fend for myself. Um, so yes, Juan's went, wife is sick and that is really cramping Juan style. Yeah. That's, dude, that's I have to the, do laundry this weekend. Laundry. Uh, yeah, it's rough. Um, and, you know, she's been sick for a few days, so apparently she does it more often than once a week. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of it. Um, but so I left yesterday, you know, to go and had lunch. I was going to get a snowball. Um, as as one yeah. would on a, on a Sunday or Saturday, 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 sorry. Saturday. But it was closed. It, it didn't open until, you know, until 2. Uh, I killed him. I said, all right, I'll suck it up. I'll go through the drive through at McDonald's. Uh, well, I get there. And there's three boys, uh, I guess either, yeah, junior high, young high school age. Um, one of them was in a shopping cart, and the other two are pushing it uh, through the drive through line. Okay. Which, which I thought was freaking hilarious. We were, uh, all, we were all young and stupid at one time. Right, right. So I said, yeah, hey, can I take you out picture? And said, yeah. And so I'm you know, shooting a bull with them. Uh, and I said, when y'all get up there, when y'all pick take your food, tell them you need uh, a drink caddy because you don't have room in a shopping cart to put your drinks. But they wouldn't serve them. They wouldn't serve them. No. And oddly, the restaurant must have something going on inside because it was closed. It was locked, so you only could go through the drive-through. And this was in the early afternoon. Yeah, one o'clock. What's going on? What's going on, Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge got some interesting stuff. I don't know, man. So, is it the um, rampant? Is it the rampant crime in Baton Rouge? I mean, because no, there's rampant crime everywhere. They're not shutting yeah, down McDonald's. That, at no, noon. That, that wasn't a high crime area, relatively speaking. And you know, that's always Hang on something now. here. We're, we're, um, ju we're judging this on the Baton Rouge curve, right? Right, uh, right. So, um, but no, I was disappointed for him. I thought it was, you know humorous that seems um, a bit uh discriminatory i mean well i've heard that the you know, in some places you know because you can't discriminate against the homeless people you can walk through the drive-through well I, that's what i'm thinking uh why would you not yeah they exactly. seem to not want to buck that they were good seem to be good kids they didn't want to buck the system oh there was a part of me that almost said, hey, just jump in, dude. I'll order your food, whatever. Out of, out of raise, but the grocery cart. Now, maybe you could say, hey, that's stolen goods. I doubt it's their own grocery cart. I asked if they took it from a homeless guy. Um, oh, okay. And they said, no, it was in the parking lot, like a little Eckert or something right across the way. And when I watched them, when they left, they brought it back. Well, there you go. These were young, young, young men out enjoying a Saturday. All right, pretty at, day. You know, probably one of the McFlurry fun. or something. And McDonald's will refuse a service. So who knows? They may have gone off and, and carjacked somebody because yeah. of that. You know? Just uh, young lads. Taco Bell's next door, man. Taco Bell will hook you up. Talk, Taco Bell don't care. Yeah. Ta Ta Popeye's was catacorner across catacorner. Yeah, yeah. So. McDonald's, McDonald's is not your only choice, man. Not your only. You you can you can do this. I um uh, well, we're talking about service. I had an interesting service experience. Should have been a higher level of a service, but it wasn't on what day was it? Wednesday, Wednesday at uh, fly uh, early. So my 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 flight and I, again uh, intercontinental airports north of Houston. I live south of Houston, so I had a flight that uh, was set to depart at seven twenty in the morning. Okay, means it boards around six forty six forty five. You start backing that out. I've got. That time of the morning, not bad traffic. Yeah, at, so, yeah. you know, but, but 45 to 50 minutes minimum to get there. 
get to the, uh, the parking lot. I park, I park on site when I'm traveling for business for somebody else paying. I don't mind somebody else paying $25 a day for me to park. If I got to do it on my own, I'll do the freaking shuttles, but you know, but whatever. So I have to factor all this. So I got to get up early, man. I left my, I was up at quarter to four in the morning. Ooh. Okay. Give or take. I left my house about uh, four 45. So I'm, and I'm not flying the damn plane. I'm just me. It's just me, Mr. Passenger <laughs> getting over there. Right. So we get, they get us boarded on the plane and eh, run on time. I can, you know, look, I, you know, it's first flight in the morning. You know, your plane's already there. They get us on there. Uh, I was fortunate enough on this one. I was sitting in the front of the plane. So it was kind of cool. I had a nice, nice seat and waiting. And I'm, man, I'm 15 feet from the cockpit. Goes on, goes on. And I'm not really paying that much attention. I can see one guy sitting in there. I can see that guy. He's doing going to checklist and little flight, little flight attendants doing what she's doing. And then uh, they come on and say, well, uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, and I forget exactly the exact wordings, but, but um, we're, we're waiting on our pilot. Waiting on our pilot. This was about 15 minutes before we were supposed to leave. Right? You, I don't know. I don't know what time pilots have to be there, but you'd almost think that they would have to be there by the beginning of boarding oh, time. Oh, I found out. Oh, no, no, no. So what happens sometimes, okay, uh, sometimes you, your pilot is coming from another flight. So they'll tell you, hey, unfortunately, your pilot's on. Not like in the delayed. old days. In the old days, they had pilots standing by. I remember when I used to fly a, a ton a Delta out of Atlanta. They had pilots that was went to the airport. They were just reported right, like from, like those, those cities that have day workers at Home Depot. You just go ride and pick one up. You well, know, sorta of. good, good, good analogy. So, dude's not there. Should have left by now. Coming, unfortunately, we're looking for the pilot, and then I can hear them. I'm sitting up close enough to hear what's going on with the gate agent. The first lieutenant or whatever the heck that guy's called, first whatever. That, the dude that ain't a pilot but also sits in the front of the plane yeah. and uh, and the flight attendant. You can tell they're pissed because they just can't find this guy. He it, it goes on. We're 20 minutes late. We're 40 minutes late. They're lying like an hour. Our, our plane you're, so you're on the plane. On the plane. Then they come on and say, hey, if you want to stretch your legs, walk around. Go to the bathroom. We're, we're trying to find the pilot. So the flight attendant walks by. And she was she was cool and young. young I would younger. assume that for them to divulge that level of information, they've got to be really ticked off. They were yeah. well. They weren't doing it intentionally at first, yeah. but I could hear them. Right. So she walks by, and you know, checking on. I'm checking on. I say, um, yeah, what's the story, man? This happens a lot. She says, uh, oh, she says we are so short on pilots. She says we got all the all the uh, the the flight the uh, first. Uh, First mates and everything. We got a lot of those, but we are wish we're really short on pilots. And I was thinking, they should train you not to tell me that. that <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's not just on a just okay. general. Yeah, the the guy that's flying is graduated last night. Yeah, he's he a little hungover. Don't want it. Well, here's this is man. Got my hand up. Those of you not watching the video, I swear this is true. So about an hour late, this guy comes walking on. I'm guessing if he's 30 years old, I'm shocked. He's upper 20s to lower 30s. Dude looks like he had a uh, bed head. Looked like he hadn't had time to fix his hair. Was relatively short, but carrying his bag gets on without a word. Without a word. Didn't say gets up there. Dude, dude never even acknowledged the fact that he was an hour freaking late getting here. I couldn't help myself. I just sitting up there, I said it loud enough for most of the plane to hear. I said, uh, hey, uh, do we do breathalyzers before we take off or what? <laughs> and, you know, somebody, well, I, I made, I told somebody that uh, that I saw when I got to the place I was going that I said that. And they were kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I make the pilot yeah. mad. I'm like, what are you talking yeah, about? They could, gonna... they could have thrown you off, man. So what's he going to do, crash my part of the plane? I don't think no, so. I think, they can, I think they can make you leave if they feel you're being disruptive. Uh, you know what? That's a fight I would have taken. That's a fight I would have taken. Like, I got here on time, bro. I've been sitting in this seat, I mean, well over an hour because he was an hour late from when we should have left. I'll take that. I'll take that argument. I will, not argue with, I will not argue with a waiter or waitress that I know is going to handle my food. because. They, <laughs> but a pilot? Yeah, oh, screw that did guy. You, did you have a connecting flight? That, no, that's the only reason uh, I didn't totally lose my mind. Now, other people on the plane, of course. Yeah. 
But a lot of folks, man, their first flight in the morning is their first flight to connect to somewhere else. So, um, the other funny thing too, was the, uh, the flight. Yeah. And, and to be honest, if you're flying that early in the morning, there's a good chance you got to be somewhere. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I just have to do it early because I had a really long drive once I got to where I was going. Yeah. But, um, the and I even asked the, the flight attendant. I said, "So you know, and again, I'm the old guy." I said, "Man, in the old days, there was always like a team of." And she said, "Yeah, well, that's what you told me about. They're so short on pilots." But she says, even if they have one, she says the the law is two hours. You've got to notify a pilot two hours prior to whatever the time would be to leave. So you know, she's basically saying, even if there was a pilot in town or something to call so in. So if one doesn't show up, it's two hours probably before somebody else. Unless they have, yeah, I mean, I guess in the old in the old days they had, because you, you just plan for that. Or yeah. it's, much, it's much more common that somebody's flight's going to get delayed, there's going to be mechanical issues, and they mm -hmm. can't. But now it's just that it sucks. And that's United, by the way. And by the way, yeah. United, hey, this is a first world, and I know I'm really, man, this sounds, this is the kind of complaint that some people say, shut up, dude. But United just ought to not call first class first class anymore. They ought to just call it, I don't know, first ish class. First few or, rows. You know, huh? The first few rows. Yeah, just or just yeah. Um, not quite a sucky coach. Premium coach. That's what they ought to call it. Premium coach. It's again. And that's not just the airlines. We know everything. Service has kind of gone to, to to crap so many places that you used to feel, you know, you just feel, well, I think they used to be nicer. Nobody's nice. Nobody, nobody wants to do their job. Although this flight attendant was kind of funny. She had her hair pulled back, and it's kind of a thing you can't really know, help but notice. She had a little plane tattooed behind her ear. Ah, uh, she was committed. Exactly. With a little, uh, with like a little flight pattern or something on there. I thought, that is committed. That is committed. I was talking to a bunch of bankers that a few days later, I told them that I said, you know, flight attendant said, that's commitment. I said, I yeah, don't know if any, any of you guys have... got a dollar sign. <laughs> so that's exactly what I said. I said, you know, if you got any employees, that got a dollar sign behind their right, ear. That's right. with, a, with a vault door. They could either do banking or be a rapper. Yeah, you know? it's true. It's true. Young money. That would be, uh, that'd be the way to go. But, um, uh, so we're we talking got... about breathalyzer tests. So, uh, yeah, my daughter had prom last night. Um, and, Apparently things are a lot different than when I had a prom because to get into the prom, they have to you know, do a breathalyzer. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, yeah. I would say things are a little different one. Right. But you know what? I, I kind of, I can appreciate that. The biggest thing though is the prom is like the, the least important part of the evening. I think the prom don't last like two hours. Really? It's all, they, they get together yeah, they have their groups, and yeah, they do a little pre get together where they all do and ha you know, take pictures and stuff. Then they all go to dinner together. Then they ride a bus or whatever to the prom from dinner, and then they have an after party, which you have to have a different outfit for the after party. You gotta have a oh, of course, of, of course, course, man. You can't so you, know, you have to have a wait, wait. So you spend way too much money. On a dress or with a tux, oh, whatever. If you're, yeah, it wasn't like us, man. Back in our day, if we rented a tux, we wear Dude, that. I wore it all weekend. We wear it all weekend. Wear it to church on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, go to a barbecue. Wear that to you. You got that weekend. You got that tux for the weekend. Wear that bad boy. Wear that. But I, I that's got sort of a nice move. The uh, the yeah. breathalyzer to be able to attend the yeah. course you, again. You know, you're dating. and the whole thing. You've got to be in by a certain time. And you can't leave before a certain time. Well, they did. And they then did. There, there's no re-entry. We know why that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, coming uh, coming from the generations, and it wasn't my, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't our generation that invented it. I'm sure there was other before, but that's hysterical. That's a like breathalyzer, dude. There would have been 12 people at our prom. Right. Right. And that's what we asked. Did anybody get booted out? And said no. Yeah. Well, game. You know what? No. Yeah. Yeah. That, I probably wouldn't have got in. Are you kidding? Dude, our prom would have, we had the sponsors in the bathrooms. The sponsors may have been drinking a beer in the bathroom for all I know, man. Um, but yeah, people brought in ice chests. They had ice chests yeah, in the bathroom. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Our, our um, chaperones were the people who had graduated the year before. Pretty much. And we, 
uh, with us. Same, but the same thing, though. I, was, I, I, I said before about, oh, I can't believe the prom only lasts two hours. I don't think anybody stayed at our prom two hours. I think we did. I mean, we had like live bands and stuff. Uh, I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what we, I, 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 we show up and it's not like I went to a lot of them. I think I went to two of them. Um, yeah, all you can go through typically if you're a boy, uh, yeah, the junior, unless, senior prom, I guess so. You, yeah. And you're not in a town where there's 10 high schools. We had a ninth grade. Problem. We had a ninth grade prom. Oh, me, and my, me and my, me and my friends didn't go. It was weird, man. And I, I think I know I told that story before I was three of my friends who I know dang well. I mean, I, I, you don't know. I guess I could have got a date. I don't know, but uh, my, my three friends, dang sure, it was, it was Kurt, Ray, and uh, and Raleigh. Four of us, man. We just <laughs> for whatever reason, we just nah, I ain't going to the prom. Yeah. It was just too too cool for school. I don't even no. know. I don't even know. But uh, but uh, but didn't. Uh, I'm a bit too shy. You know, I sort of like oh, you yeah. trying to run. Yeah, I like you, you running for the HOA. I don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my kids don't believe that. My son, my my you know, like my son don't believe when I tell him. No, man, I was, dude, I didn't no, talk. Dude, I've told the story. I used to go down to the payphone. I wasn't calling somebody. First of all, I wasn't calling somebody from my parents' house. Okay, um, right, right. And surely wasn't asking somebody face to face. No, man, I know. I yeah, don't even. I could have saw you twenty minutes ago, but I'm calling you now. As though trying, I just thought of it. I'm trying to think, because uh, I know. I'll bet you till I got to college kind of changed everything. But even then it was sort of like, you didn't really ask anybody out. It was just sort of almost a mm, assumed accidental. You end up, it's kind of weird. You sort of, you sort of end up with a girlfriend. You don't even really know how you, I guess we're boyfriend and girlfriend now. I mean, I don't remember signing a contract the, she took the lead. or have a hundred percent. Cause I know in high school, whenever I did a couple of times, I think I got the nerve. I was probably batting 500. If I had to step back and think of like, because I would only ask somebody if it was like a prom. I'll bet you my senior prom, I'll bet you I got shut down once or twice. I must have. Because the other thing, too, is you wait too long. That's the other thing. Too. I don't know. My senior prom, I went with a girl who was in college. Um, and I saw her one night. We were at, a, at, at the foundry in Thibodeau. Um, yeah. Already at a nightclub before the prom. Uh, <laughs> so, so I asked her. Um, but this thing, so I went and it's unusual that I go, but, uh, me and George have been really sick and it was, you know, so they do all the 8 million photos at the party mm -hmm. the thing before. And so I, I went, um, and then I've said, you know, she goes to a, it, it's a really good school. That's, um, that's, that's one way of saying it's a fun, fun money school. Yeah. 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 It's a no, fun, that, fun money school. Exactly. Yeah, that, I, that I don't really qualify to go to. It, um, I, I know you feeling my, I sent my, I sent my younger son to a, one of those schools for his middle school years. Yeah. And you think, you think your son, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he's having a wonderful time there, yeah. but there are different levels of, yeah. I don't want to say stress. Nice. No, You're, but it's, you feel so like an outsider. The dude resodded his backyard for the event. Um, Resodded the backyard for the prom yeah. pre for the pre prom. Yeah, because you know had a couple of dead spots as dog pees on them. So I said, "Bro, you resodded your yard." Um, there you go. There are different wings of the house. Um, there, um, the the kitchen in the um, the outdoor chilling area, you know, mm -hmm. the party room, so to speak, was you know better than any kitchen I've ever had. <laughs> um but so anyway yeah and, and it's mostly moms there but the you know some of the dads there yeah, are in very nice jeans button down shirts very nice you know dress shoes as were you i'm sure i'm sure yeah i had cut my grass right before um <laughs> and so that's what that's what i was wearing <laughs> i'm sure so god bless your daughter is she Man. just used to it the yeah, sheep. That's what I said. Do I need a bait, take a shower or anything or change? And they said, well, do you smell like you just cut grass? I said, I don't know. Smell me. Oh, <laughs> so I said, all right. Well, did you know what you were signing up for when you went? Did you know? I didn't really think it was going to be that long or that type of. Yeah. I mean, we were there for like an hour. And, and, and you may have actually had. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. I'm just realizing something. It's not like you had to mow the back 40. Isn't your no, yard right. pretty? Right. It took me twenty minutes. 
yeah okay all right so it's but not... i'd also worked in the morning i took all the doors off my jeep and everything got kind of sweaty doing that gotcha you know, gotcha which well is why i went to get the snowball earlier but no it's, you know no, no, no. <laughs> reward me looking looking for my reward snowball yeah. so you know they said hey you know for the parents there's one in, in beer i said all right bro where's that beer there you go lead me to it uh i look like the guy who needs one yeah um, what what have you rich what are you rich idiots been doing all day i've been Taking doors off of Jeeps and doing yard yeah. work. So I told Riley today, I said, I want you to marry a really rich guy because I want to hang out in the house like that. That's that's, said, that's but I'm, but I'm kind of getting old, so you better get it happening quick. I was going to make a joke about that, but you know, that's pretty much how society has come up, right? I mean, that's, that's, I kind of joke with my, with my, my younger son about that. It's like, dude, you just go, for, I, I give him the list of last names to look into. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man. Don't, don't don't get me wrong. If you find somebody that you just madly fall in love with, that's that's option A. But yeah, if if, 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 if it's between if it's a tie, yeah, if it's close, you know, just listen for phrases like beach house. Yeah, uh, anybody who summers somewhere, um, you know, we flew private. These are all right. the kind just of use the, describe the you know the plane. Exactly. These are all the kinds of that I'm this week talking about the plane with. Uh, so I'm up in in West Virginia, and um, one of my friends, and she, I love her to death. She's a president of this bank, and she, I've known her forever, and she's great, and uh, very, very, very nice person, and and humble, and doesn't like to put on anything, you know, like, and. It was the event was relatively late, and and uh, we were at the Greenbrier, which yeah, was, oh, man, that was pleasing. I'll, I'll tell you some stories about about the Greenbrier, but the Greenbrier is in the middle. If you look, it, it, tell you what, if you just go ahead and Google like middle of freaking nowhere. That's what ought to come up, right? They call it America's Resort. I got news for you, America don't know where it's at, and a big part of it, you know, it's underground bunkers are supposed to be for years ago, like they would move the government and then, you know. Right. Well, that's whatever. where, because Rick pointed that out, that's where the Saints used to hold yes. the training camp. And come to find right. out, the yeah. Saints. And it was to get away from everybody, basically. Right. The Saints have done it. Dallas has used this place. And one of the ladies that works there um, told me that during the NFL season, uh, oftentimes West Coast teams, if they have to play two games on the East Coast, they won't stand. announce it, but they'll stay at the yeah. Greenbrier. Um, but the thing is, man, it's freaking hard to get to. Well, my friend, they said when they were leaving her and the CEO going back, going back to uh, uh, to like Richmond, Virginia that that night. I'm like, oh, and she, well, we, we're flying, and I went, you ain't flying United again, again, <laughs> you know. And she's like, oh yeah, we don't want to. I don't. She said, I don't want to say anything. I want to just, you know, make people could think we're we're, we're driving, but I'm, I'm like. Man, I wouldn't be apologizing for that. You kidding me? It's like, yeah, we're going to get on a plane that's going to leave when we say leave. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people sitting on it. And, um, yeah. Probably nicer seats than, you know. I'll, I'll bet they didn't have to wait an hour for their pilot when they got to the airport either. I'm just just going to put that out there. But nice, nice. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Greenbrier, that's where I was. Uh, like I said, it's almost impossible to get to. My best option to get there by the time I needed to get there was to fly to Charlotte. And for those of you that are geographically, Charlotte, North West Carolina, Virginia. Charlotte, North wow, Carolina, four hour drive, four hour drive. The closest airport, like, so put it this way. What anything, part of West Virginia is it in? It, um, middle of nowhere, West Virginia. I don't you know. You can go into like Norfolk or something? No, Norfolk is way near the, uh. Oh, that's on the other coast. Near the, yeah, near the, the, uh, near the Atlantic, the, yeah. yeah. No, this is – and actually, I drove I, – so I went from uh, North Carolina into Virginia and then Virginia into uh, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded of a few things. We've talked about this. We joke about being Cajuns. Some would even say coon asses, and that's the old line. Do you get offended when somebody says coon ass? Depends who's saying it. Depends who's saying it and the inflection in their voice when they say <laughs> it. But, man, you get up there in, like, uh, Virginia, in West Virginia, dude, it's just a different kind of coon ass. It's a different kind of redneck. It's, it's, I don't want anybody making fun of 
the bar. We joke about the bayou, man. Oh, that's on the bayou. Dude, you get out to some of these towns, the name of some of these towns, and I love listening to local radio. I've told you that before. That's mm -hmm. my that's my jam when I'm traveling, especially when I get off. In, you know, I'm driving in like country somewhere. Man, I am just scanning. My favorite is if I get like an AM radio station that if I'm listening to a station that's running commercials for that guy, like a chiropractor. <laughs> that's the last time you heard a chiropractor radio commercial. Like a chiropractor, like some garage sales. Um, man, that's I, I'm flashing back to Kelly B days back in Golden Meadow. Just just give me the give me the local stuff. It was all good, good stuff. Uh, I went to this is decades ago. I was hanging out with my friend's band with those guys in panic and they played a gig in West Virginia and it was like some frat party and it, it was in the middle of nowhere in a like in a barn like in the middle of a field and I'm not talking some you know frou-frou barn it's <laughs> like a barn that livestock had recently been in there you go and I'm talking you know it was literally nowhere or nothing around there i just always remember that because yeah in the middle of it two guys ran up from the back naked and jumped on stage oh. just started dancing so there you go so di different kind of redneck <laughs> different kind of different yeah and it's any, anytime you get into these areas that depending on what side of the mountain you on your, your self-service goes out that's that's when that's when it's really weird you jump driving and say, man it's 2024 and I'm trying to get a cell signal going through two lanes. I, again, I, you know, I'm reminded. I always say down, you know, down the bayou. Had not living there for a long time, I sort of get a little antsy when I'm driving there now because it's two lanes, and you got oncoming traffic. All you, you, right. you, you, you no just, shoulder, two lanes. Hey, dude, guess what? That's that's most of North Virginia yeah. and West Virginia. That's just it. I, I mean, or not? I don't know. Is that I, some of the places where they have? The, the the sand lanes where it's like, you know, if you're a big truck and you're eight. Your I saw go one. Out. I used to have those in Georgia. When I lived in Georgia, I saw those all the time. I saw one of those. Um, what do they call it? Uh emergency. Yeah. It's if you lose if you lose control of your 18 wheeler and you can't stop it, you go off and it's, it goes up a hill, basically a sand. Right, hill. right, right. So I, I thought about it. <laughs> I saw it. Sometimes something, I, I'm, something's happening. I'm thinking, all right, I got to bring this one up. I got to talk to Juan about this. So the, the, on the Thursday night, this event I was at at the Greenbrier, uh, very nice, very, I mean, very nice, so, you know, big group, and it was an award ceremony. So they were acknowledging their top various managers and stuff of the, uh, of, of the past year. And they let each one of the folks ahead of time pick their walk-up music. Oh, like bro. the like the like the swim yeah, swimathon, bro. Or Riley's swim meets, yeah. Oh well, but this is you know, but and they, they, again, like they they read a nice announcement about them, and then there's a slide, and there's their picture. But it's kind of also cool. They have various pictures, I guess, they can send in. It's like them and their family, or them and mm -hmm. their their hobbies and their pets, and it's just so it's really really cool. But man, and, and I'll, I I don't want to make this sound. This is not racial. This is just an observation. Uh, some folks just have better walk-up music and are more into it than um, than others. Because the very first winner, and I was sitting kind of up toward the stage, and um, and she gets her name called, and I can't remember what the song was, but it was a it was a uh, hip hop. Yeah, it was a it was a hip hoppy kind of ditty. And man, this lady wasn't young. She was probably at least upper forties, maybe you know, again, I'm terrible with ages because she, she could have been, you know, so you're, you're speculating that, you know, she didn't grow up with a lot of hip hop. Don't know. Assuming. I wouldn't know it. See, I don't, I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not as hip on that. I cannot tell you, but she knew the song and she had a napkin or a tower, whatever, man. You were twerking. She didn't quite twerk. This was a, this was a prestigious event and the, CEO and president and head of stuff for for her employer were standing on stage waiting to 
give her an award. But man, she enjoyed every step of that that walk on the way up there. And what's funny was so after that happened, she was the first one. Like she was she was manager number twenty. They had nineteen more to go. Okay. And I was sitting up front. I just couldn't, you know, my voice is kind of loud. I just said, good luck following that. That's a start. Like, <laughs> and like the, 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 the CEO of the bank was up there. He was laughing. He, so she repointed at me. He goes, man, the bar's been set. And uh, so it was funny. It was really, really cool. I like some young lady. It was kind of cool. Yeah, I just, I, I love the, the several visible tats. Not, not crazy, but Metallica, bro. That was her. Oh, wow. Her walk up music was, um, Oh, what was it? It wasn't Sandman. It was, it was a rocker though. Might have been Master of Puppets or something, man. It was, it was. I said, yeah, gonna... good, good song about management. Okay, here's a funny. So and then later on, a guy about our age wins. He goes up to Eye of the Tiger. Oh Lord, I hate that song. I, I, I felt for him. I was thinking, oh dude, somebody should have coached you. Go, Co you know. Don't know, you know. Was he punching like Rocky walking up uh, there? I, I don't know, but he was he was he was a sort of a high up there winner. And then this other guy who would come over and talk to me before he was. Yeah, and he, I, again, I'm guessing he was in his 30s, younger guy. I'm not, I don't know the nationality, and I'm not just saying that because one of the senior people that was going to do the introductions while this young man was talking to me came over and said, "Hey, you know, we talked a little bit." And he says, "I don't want to. I just want to make sure. How do you say your last name again? I want to make sure I get it right." Which was kind of cool. You wanted to make sure. If he was on stage, what, he was going to Martin. I don't know what I don't, it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it had a few. It had a, a few more what syllables. Were the options. I don't know. It had a few more syllables than 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 than, than mine. He went up there. His he was sitting and he was sitting at the table right next to me. His walk up song was "Riding Dirty." Dude, I promise you, you never been to a bank award ceremony where a guy's getting up. And, it gets me riding dirty. Riding dirty. I'm like. What is the significance of that song, bro? Right. But, but it was fun. Well, I told That's... that to my wife and my son yesterday on our way to do something, and they spent like half the morning trying to figure out what their walk-up songs would be. <laughs> did did they come up with some? Did you influence their decisions? Oh, well, my wife, my wife's would probably be some kind of a new kids on the block song. I mean, it was just you, you try to tag something for old times. I don't know that my young, I don't know that my son ever got one because what I did, you know, the other day with me was uh, Money Talks. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna fall down a mountain just to dirt in excess. There, there you go. Think about that out there, America. You can, you can, you can email us at David Juan at protonmail.com. What would be your walk up song? You know, it, de it depends on what time of day it was and what the yeah, group was, yeah, what I was feeling. I get up known what, to... yeah, I would have liked to know what everybody else's song was just so I could make sure I, I'm picking the best one. I could get up there to, I don't know, Lash Pa La Patat. Yeah. Um, I don't even know who sang that. Lashpa la pata. Um, or Apalusa Soul Stance. Oh, bro. Apalusa Soul Used to come this way. <laughs> on his way, he'd sing this song. I can't hear the jukebox, the jukebox play. play. Who you sang can't... that? I forgot. Uh, okay. I'm gonna Man. say Joe. I'm gonna say Joe Barry. No. I don't know. I don't, I have no clue. I know I liked it. You know, we haven't done this in a while, and she's not going to know. No. Hey, Siri. Uh -huh. Who sang Opelousa So Stance? Uh, nope. Opelousa Bones, Opelousa. They're doing it like Appaloosa. Do I can't hear the jukebox play. <laughs> can't. Hey, Siri. Who sang? Who's saying I can't hear the jukebox play? That's gonna be like foreigner. <laughs> uh, yeah, jukebox here. I told you. Yeah. yeah. Siri, Siri right, apparently does know, not people. have a. Let us know who's saying that. Siri doesn't have a Cajun. Um, no. I want to say it was. Uh, why is that name Joe Barry? And I want to say the flip side was the song Polly don't know about Ford Barry. Da -da -da. Dude. This is like a hundred years ago. Yeah, uh, um, I don't know that I was in the B side back then. I used to listen. To, hey, I had um, Marty Robbins, man, Shotgun Rider on forty five. I think that was the B side to something. You ever, you ever heard Marty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was his big? He had. Um... Oh, he had uh, down in the West Texas uh -huh. town of El Paso. I fell in love, fell in love with a Mexican, Mexican girl. girl. 
I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking about it, just comes out. Da, 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 da. And I want to say the flip side of that was shotgun rider. I've been riding on this shotgun. Uh, some like shotgun rider. Many an outlaw tried it. Many an outlaw died. Shotgun rider. It was a it was <laughs> an epic tale, man. Marty brought you through what it was like to be the shotgun rider on like a Wells Fargo type of. That's what he did, man. That's Real what stage he did. coach. He 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 rode the stage coach. He was the guy with the shotgun. No. Don't all right. First guy to kill somebody. Don't many, nothing. Yeah. Many an outlaw tried it. Many Don't bring an none. It won't be none. Many an outlaw died. That's right. Uh what else? Dude, did you watch any of the draft? The NFL draft? It was I was at that awards thing while it was yeah. going on. I so. didn't really watch it, but one thing that I guess, you know, as they're coming up with football news and everything as all this stuff happens, is that the NFL has apparently approved for this season what's called guardian helmets. Guardians? It's those helmets you see them wear, and sometimes that practice has got you know, no, 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 like no, no, big no. <laughs> padded like, things. Like, like, like space balls, like the movie yeah. space uh-huh. balls. Uh huh. Yep. It's like what you know. Some people made their kids wear when they like little, and they got the big bubble helmets that they ride a a, a, a tricycle with. And They're stuff. gonna wear those in a game. They're allowed to. I'm immediately pulling against anybody, even if they're on the Saints, who wears that. I mean. Here's my take on that. If you are I, yeah, injured, I'd go for that. I, I'd risk the concussion. If if you are injured enough that you feel, or your doctor, or your neurosurgeon feels that it's necessary for you to wear the big soundproofing material, that's what it looks like. It looks like yeah. uh, when you walk into a, a recording studio that had the uh, soundproofing uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cones. Yeah. And how can you run in that? That's got to be like running with a, uh, I don't know, a big with a. Well, I was gonna say with a hairnet, but a hairnet's not that big. No, no, it's yeah, it's just weird. And they're gonna, they're gonna allow that. Yeah. All if the you're way running back, I mean, you got a bigger tack, bigger target to tackle. Your head's like ten times as big as it was. Uh, well, I don't know. I think they haven't. They like basically legislated it that to tackle somebody now, it has to be like about a six square inch space right in the center of their torso that you're supposed yeah, to yeah you kind of got to touch them with you know padded gloves magically get them down because like now yeah, you can't tackle them from the back when they're running or anything or you can't just grab them and use your own body weight right to bring them down you're supposed to magically all right yeah. they asked them nicely said hey bro you know i'd get you i could blow out your knees but if you fall down well with more power to the NFL, they got that figured out. Although I think it sort of played out too. I'm tired of it. Was it? It seemed to me like ten years ago when the NFL draft really started taking off, it seemed more entertaining. All of a sudden, oh, the big city thing feeling. Now it's just like, oh, man, it's just it's too. Know, they you always know go too far. Who went, man? Who I, I just can't. Oh uh, yeah, my my uh, one of my godchildren's husband, uh, Brad Bradley. He's a funny dude. That dude, that guy is funny. Uh, and I showed you. I showed you a clip. You ended yeah. up on local TV up there. But uh, that's some Saints diehards, man. That's that's uh, it's one thing to say I'm going to watch the entire draft. It's another thing to drive. Right, right. I used hours, to, you know, whatever the they Saints, drove. To. When the Saints practice at Nichols, I'd go, yeah, you know, which was boring as all get out to, to drive there for an hour and a half to go watch them practice. But you felt like, yeah, all right, man. The Home fact that Nichols. the Saints practice at Nichols is actually kind. That's when it was a, fe- a grass field, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, Nichols facilities now are okay. You know, they height. They got some nicer stuff recently. You know, they got you know the artificial turf, and they got a little covered practice area now. But you know, back in the day, no, no, like, man, it was like practicing in a you know in a field. <laughs> yeah, pretty much was the yeah. you know if you wanted to meet some of the Saints players, just go to first night of training camp, go hang out at the Walmart. Oh, really? Yeah, because that's where they were all going shopping and stuff, getting their stuff. Well, I'm still impressed that the uh, the Manning uh, Passing Academy goes back to Nichols every year. I mean, that's that's actually pretty impressive. Whatever they got locked into, and they just still well, still really because this is. Uh, I mean, you know, no offense, I'm glad, um, but it's not exactly like you know mid July in South Louisiana. I mean, they deal with everything. They deal yeah, with it's op- good outside weather, oppressive heat, and or torrential thunderstorms. Yeah. 
Uh, it's like every year. Every year the challenge is going to be let's keep either people, let's try to keep people from dying from heat exhaustion or let's try to keep people from dying from getting struck by lightning. That's usually, yeah. that's the, that's what those days are, are made of. But, but there you go. But glad, uh, glad they can continue to do it. Um, this, this was, I don't know why I thought about this, but so I'm walking around the Greenbrier and uh, I had a day, uh, several hours to, you know, cool. So I'm just a walk. It's a huge place. Walked by the croquet field. They got a croquet. That's like the third different place I stay that has a croquet, a dedicated. Well, you're, you're pretty stellar croquet player, right? I, I have been known. I have been known. It was like legit. They were out there playing with big, mal you know, wasn't like the kind we got at Walmart or K actually Kmart back in the day that you might even see right now uh, at the Audubon House in Thibodeau. They busted that thing out for Easter. It was, you know, uh, cro croquet match going on on the side of Audubon. Um, but Anybody putting their foot on their ball and tapping their other I one? I did not and see the, that. Not on, uh, and, I forgot and what the you fact, call that. But. The fact that I was watching it and I didn't see that made me wonder, hmm, Maybe we made that rule up ourselves. <laughs> That's a South Louisiana rule. That might have been the Cajun take on things, bruh. This game yeah, is for those of you who don't remember that. It's basically if your ball rubbed up against somebody else's ball, you could send them into oblivion or something. Right? You had, but we played. You had, you had, you had two, cho you had two choices. If you if you hit somebody else's ball, you could either take two shots yourself. If you left their ball alone, mm -hmm. you could take two shots yourself, or you could you could send them. And those of you that don't remember how you, you know, send people is you put the balls close together and you put your foot on your ball, right? And then whack it and the kinetic energy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the force. Yeah, that. Would send it's inertia. No, depending, it's not inertia. How, depending how good you were, you could send people. Right, dude. You could send them out the field. You know, but uh, that was, uh, I did not see that happening. So, again, uh, I guess. We played, you know, like I said, it could have been. That's the Cajun rule. That's a bunch of guys that were like, "Bro, this game's boring. How do we, how do we make this game more fun?" I know. Were there little hoops or whatever you shoot through? Yeah, there were wickets. There, there were, yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not hoops. So they were square. They were like, all right. So none that you bend when you step on, probably. None that you bend when you step on. These are more industrial. And there's nobody. There was nobody sending anybody into the crawfish <laughs> ditch. <laughs> that would suck. Bro, you hit me the crawfish ditch again. They got water in there. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rules? Do I do I get relief from the water in the crawfish ditch yeah. over here? <laughs> Limit two two cents per game. Man. So walking around this place, I, I thought about so again. I, I these are kind of places I, I you never I would never and so what is okay what is the place used for is it a hotel is it it is a is huge it, resort it is a, a retreat people, area people with freaking money they got and they play they play a PGA tournament out there every year so apparently like Sam Snead the famous golfer the mm -hmm. guy that was uh, I think he I think he actually has the most wins of any PGA player ever he was a and it's I mean the hotel is or the whatever it's, I don't know if it's a hotel but it's massive massive. It is. It is massive. And it's kind of like that place on The Shining. Well, it's bigger, way bigger. Dude, dude Greenbrier may be the biggest. I've, I've stayed in some pretty big old resort because they used to build them huge. This one's about as big as I can remember. You just walk and it was sort of, it was sort of there midweek and it wasn't that crowded. So kind of conducive to just walk around. And especially if I'm, you know, my attitude. If somebody doesn't tell me you can't right. come in here, I'm, that door's not locked. Watch me. I walk. I walked into the. Uh, I go out to the golf uh, pro shop. Walked. Uh, oh, there's the locker rooms. Let me go down in the locker rooms. Walked around where the PGA players play, and some of them have their you know permanent lockers there. Yeah, their little sitting area down there for them. Dude, I even used the urinal down there while I was down there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, see, I I, I peed Did in the same place Phil Mickelson <laughs> Right. Yeah. Join the club. Um, but the thing was when I pulled up there and it's one of these places you pull up to and there's a guarded gate out front and you have to tell them if you're checking in, they got your name. So, right. So, yes. Hi, hi, Mr. Martin. How are you doing? And um, said uh, he starts telling me how to valet park and I don't like valet parking. I don't. 
I hate you. It, it just because, you know, now it wasn't like I was going to leave, but I don't, you know, it, it's a rental car. It's not like I'm worried about it. I, just, I yeah. like parking on my own pace if I want to come out to the, so I drive around this massive place trying to yeah, find if, where if you can. If you get something in your car, you don't have to pay somebody 20 bucks to go get it. Trying to find where you can freaking park. Well, good luck. I mean, I drove through the circle, up around, backside, and reserve, reserve, reserve. I drove half a mile trying to find. So I figured they must be kidding. Then I just pulled up, and I mean, I wasn't anything I'm paying. I mean, I'm not even paying for it. I right. was trying to be a good steward of someone else's money. So I pull up to like, I'm just going to get valeted, and it doesn't matter because I'm just going to, they're going to pick pick it up in the room. And it's one of these places that, man, they you're going to be hit for 10 to 20 bucks before you can ever get to your room. Because they come out to the car, and they're so nice. Welcome, and your name's on the uh, on the yeah. card that's on the thing. But, guys, all of a sudden, the guy's got my doors open. They're taking my jacket out. They're grabbing my bags. Dude took my, my I had a, a, a sports coat on the back uh, thing, took it out, held it out, put it on me. I'm like, oh, yeah. I know. It's like, uh, I, can't just, I can't just tip you two bucks now, man. That's <laughs> That's the whole thing. You have to be conscious of bringing the right denominations oh. of cash to tip. Then they take you take you, you, they don't even ask like would you like to carry your own no no boom that's gone. They give you a, they give you a a, a bag uh well, you check in on the side and then give them this number and we'll bring your room up to your you know we'll bring it up to your bring room. Your bags up to your room. It just means that's just another $5 minimum, bro. You know. Um Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pay you to get out of my car and then I'm gonna pay you to bring it up to my room. And I get it. And you know what? If you're just uh, if you're just like a rich dude, a rich fan, you know, it, it don't matter. But like at some point, it's like, come on, yo. Know? I just let me do something. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. And now it's like fives. You feel bad if you give anybody less than a five dollar tip. Yeah, five. That's sad. Bidenomics. Five is the new. You know, uh, five is the new one. Dude, a couple of weeks ago, when I was at a trade show, and it's like, you know, all I had was a twenty, and it's like I'm not freaking tipping the dude. 20 bucks to bring my bag because my room wasn't even ready so it was you know you bringing my bag my single bag from my car to the check-in desk uh to the concierge and i think he was yeah oh thank you i said hey bro could you give me 15 back and i felt oh, bad man. doing it oh no 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 well here's here, let me know here's the move before you pull anything out you ask do you have change yeah you know you don't you don't pull out of you don't pull out the bill without setting the expectation yeah. do you have change uh and you're a fool if you think i'm giving you twenty dollars to do something <laughs> yeah. that i wanted yeah. to do myself anyway right yeah. um but i get it man look if i had a son or daughter working there i'd be telling them hey yeah. just open every door do whatever 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 just just get get at it uh back in the old days it's like, like at the airports the the outside bag checking people Man, that that was that was prime job. People, they got paid. Those those people made a lot of money, cause everybody and they doing nothing. But you could always tell why it was like the older guys and some of the more senior people out there on the outside uh, bag check stuff. They getting greased, man. Yeah. They getting greased the whole time. So, the econ that's the economy we're working with now, yo. But one of the golf courses there, and again, you walk around, and I don't want to. All right. You you I don't be offensive, but it's the kind of place. It's so big and so ridiculous and very, um, you know, pictures posh. of presidents posh and you know just, just think of the stereotype of who is going out and hanging out at the Greenbrier, right? And but it's a beautiful place, uh, and it's got I get I think it has two golf courses, but I wouldn't say I know there's one that they play on, and the name of the golf course is uh, the Old White. <laughs> they got hats with the old white shirts with the old white and i was like man the jokes write themselves around this place wow nobody tried to thought about re rebranding that over the years i almost yeah, bought that's... a i almost bought an old white hat <laughs> yeah yeah what color are the hats uh they were rather subdued um uh, basic tones let's put it this way i think there was a white maybe a maybe a black maybe a green they were not there were no camouflage old <laughs> you know they didn't they didn't that uh, wasn't uh n none of that uh well, well speaking of the old white um uh, 
Baton Rouge has a, or East Baton Rouge Parish now has a new city. They have a new city? They have a new city because it's called St. George, where it's it's, it's a breakaway city. Um, the, the residents of that who are accused of, you know, being only white, but they're not, um, got tired of all of the, it, it's where a lot of the tax base in East yeah. Baton Rouge Parish lives and mm -hmm. it gets little of the uh, return. Correct. Um, so it, you know, they tried it several years ago, then the legislature created some law that you now had to follow to do it. So they did that, um, got it voted in. Um, then the, the mayor and a couple other people filed suit against them, but of uh, course saying, you know, that they don't have the tax base to support themselves, blah, 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 blah. But the reality is the rest of Baton Rouge is going to have, you know, going to lose a lot of tax base. Yeah. Doing this, uh, happen. And so it, so it did, they did break yeah. away. Yeah, the uh, state Supreme Court ruled in favor of the breakaway. Um, and, and are they going to rule in favor right, of, yeah, so they, they get their own tax? Are they going to get their own police force, their own? They've got, right now, it's because Baton Rouge, does, Baton Rouge has both the sheriff's office and the Baton Rouge City Police. So these, this was an area, most of these areas were unincorporated Baton Rouge. So right. it already had sheriff's offices okay. here okay look it's you it's, guys don't fire department already here and everything it's similar to atlanta buckhead the buckhead area of atlanta when we lived in georgia we moved there in 95 we were there we lived there through uh like 2000 beginning of 2000 and then i've gone back i mean i was in atlanta a ton a ton uh over the past 20 years Buckhead was nor it's northern suburb North, yeah. or so of northern part of Atlanta was always super nice, man. I mean that's that's where, right? I mean Atlanta used to Atlanta used to be a great city. The, all of Atlanta was was great, but then over time, uh, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, Atlanta ran itself into the ground like a lot of cities have. And Buckhead went from being just an ex just a great place to be to it got dangerous. It's dangerous now, right. um, and they tried to break out. They are they're always doing it, saying, "Hey, this is it's you know they're paying right, the way you're running all the, the taxes, wrapping up our place." It's one hundred percent. You know, a, a lot of people le have to leave the cities not because they want to, it's because you kind of have to. Like you run you run a place to where it's like it's 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 expensive. It's not safe. Um, and you go out of your way to it seemingly encourage, right? In, in, encourage right. crime. That's what ends up happening. So there, there you go. But so now here's the difference. But you would think it wouldn't happen. I guess Atlanta somehow got it stopped. I don't. I mean, Louisiana's you know it's a conservative state. So, well, East Baton Rouge had a couple before where there's areas in East Baton Rouge Parish um, that broke away to create. It's to create the, your own school district, basically. Um, or was the, I guess right. the original motivation of it. And it happened to our other places. And then when St. George wanted to do it, they changed the rules and said, well, you're not an incorporated town. So now you've got to get incorporated. And then they put up hurdles to get in, yeah, to incorporation and they met those. Then they'd move the bar. Exactly. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, and then they'd meet those again and shows you how bad they want to get out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's been going on. I mean, it's probably an eight, 10 year process. It's just like man, back in the day, man, cut off. We wanted to break out. We tried to, man. we wanted to block off and keep, keep Galliana there. Keep La Rose there. Didn't work, man. They just kept. Kept trying to, yeah. Taking the good things out of cut off and, and giving it to everybody else. But we drew the line at Fouchon. That's it. No, <laughs> no, you got to stay down there. No, they're all everybody. Yeah, it's all. Well, that was an advantage of, of living in an area like that. I mean, rich, poor, indifferent, whatever. Everybody lived together. Everybody went to the same schools. There's no private schools yeah. in South Lafourche. Uh, as much as, um, you know, some people want to, you know, again, be fun, fun. All right, here's the deal. I have no doubt that if where you lived or the area you lived in 
if you could send your daughter and felt good about the public school situation. Oh, yeah. Right? 100%. Trust me, dude. I've been counting down tuition payments for yeah, years. Exactly. That that ends up, you know, it's all these things that fall apart, man. It's like, and, and it, it's true. You lose the public school system. It, 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 it accelerates the people that can get out do. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. If I was just saying, now, once Juan gets elected to the HOA, that's a stepping stone yeah. for his next move. It'd be the mayor of St. George. Is that where you live? No, it's across the street from me. You're kidding. Yeah. What? No. What? Now, 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 will the rich people of St. George send one of their cops to protect you guys if it gets real? Or? No. Yeah, because we're still unincorporated part of Baton Rouge, so it wasn't a oh. whole incorporated. <laughs> it's, um, a, it's across the street. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It literally across the street. Yeah. Good luck with that. And uh, I think we should just start maybe it's like borrowing some of our campaign ideas to, you know, just, just Baton Rouge. Crime. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. You thinking about crime? Think about something else. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you if you live under the interstate overpass, move. You know, there there are ways around unless this. Unless you want to vote for me, there are ways around this. Let's see what uh, is there anything left here. Oh, maybe we can talk about this one uh, some other time. But um, <laughs> I joke with my wife that I hope Joe Rogan has really good personal security because. Mm -hmm. He puts out some stuff, and he has people on there that just – and I went down the bunny trail, man. I went down the – watching because they talk about whether or not we actually landed on the moon. And he brought on this guy who's uh, – and he gives the whole history and what he's been doing and the movies he's made and the stuff. that. And, and, dude, just the data they give out, the unrefutable data about – man, man, I, I, I almost – it, the kind of stuff they put out where you think, okay, if if what they're saying isn't true, somebody's got to just come, just, 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 just show where he's wrong. Just show how, you know, just like the basic common sense stuff we don't even think about, about how, why we've never been back, supposedly. Um, the stuff they even admit to now uh, that we, to this, to this day, we couldn't, like, we can't do what they're claiming they did. Well, I don't know, man. You're, you're, you're local. Um, Congresswoman, I believe. Uh, <laughs> she's she not mine. Pretty, she got some pretty good ideas about the moon. Yeah, she it's made of cheese, is it? Or no, it's gases. Yeah, well, gases. Yeah. She, gases. She said the moon was made of the gases. Yeah, Sheila Jackson Lee, man. That's that's um yeah. Shared shared a, sat on a plane with her. That was that was uh. I'm sure she doesn't remember it, but I do. I do. Um, uh, yeah, man. It was. And the stuff, the, the stuff, just the facts he puts out there and they're showing pictures and how they've come back. And now even they've run some of the most famous pictures, supposedly, of the moon landing and some of the stuff that you know, everybody watched on their black and white TVs and right. And oh, uh, and uh, they ran those images through some of the most sophisticated artificial intelligence systems here that are designed to spot fraudulent or, or fakes. That's what it does. It, and like, it's never wrong. I mean, it's one of <laughs> it's it's and it's all fake. Well, all those are more of a conspiracy theorist than me. I just don't have I don't care. Well, you care because at the end of the day, it's the kind of things you can never admit. Think about it. What 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 happens if all of a sudden you just said, yeah, yeah, we just fake my, that. My it wife's was, first husband didn't believe it. So I choose to want it to be true. Well, the guy made a good point. He said it's a good lie. He said there are things like you talk about, like the you know Kennedy assassination, uh, 9-11, all this other stuff. Regardless of who did it, um, it's a very it's a negative thing. And you kind of would like people say like, hey, I want to know the truth. They say well, with 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 America, a lot of Americans, it's like an ego thing, oh, right? We can't handle we, the truth. That we've hung our hat on that forever. And if you just all of a sudden, you know, that's what's basically what the guy's saying. He says no. He said we put up a we put up a, 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 a something in orbit. We launched something. We launched them. They got up there because we we can do that, just like the space station, mm -hmm. right? You can the you know, the space station is just like right there. I mean, you can hit you can throw a rock and hit the space station. Yeah. It's like yeah, you'll see it sometimes when it's yeah, you know, the, the 
when it's in a certain position. People, yeah, people think it. this space station is out near the moon. Not even close. No. Not even close. And he basically pointed a point that, like, you know, Elon Musk, who now you would say is probably the biggest expert maybe in the world on rockets and or his team is right. Do they do all the stuff with SpaceX and 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 Elon talks about like to you know go back to the moon or go manned whatever to the moon. And even he is talking about how it would take. You have to we'd have to like launch refueling. Uh, well, I've always thought the biggest challenge from it was not the part of getting there but the part of getting back and that's the, that's what they keep pointing out you couldn't get there to start off with yeah. get it's it's beyond the realm of possibility they they got there much less exactly right you needed all this turbo thrust and everything to get there so here's 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 all back I'm ain't no big deal though here's all i'm saying you start watching and people just throw in facts and facts and facts and what's good about the podcast and i mean i'm recommending another one Rogan takes the attitude of, and he played devil's advocate the whole time. Yeah, but, 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 and, and, and they did three hour podcast on this stuff. That's the whole thing with his po- God, they're so long. You got to stop and come back. You don't, yeah. you don't sit through the same, the, the, uh, all in one stretch, but it covers, you know, but again, I'm one of these guys and I'm not usually this way. I would almost prefer, in fact, I would prefer somebody from NASA, somebody from to come yeah, out, come on and, and, and just show. In fact, Brogan even invited. He says, "Would you be willing if we can find somebody to come in and debate?" Right? I want that. I want them to come out and say, "No, no, 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 no. We did that. We 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 did we did exactly what we told y'all." But the fact that when they've come back and apparently on purpose because they've announced this, NASA has apparently destroyed all the footage of stuff. They've destroyed all the specs and all the plans. Let's on the honest, vehicles, Dave, yeah. NASA doesn't have a you know endless amount of hard drive on their computers. That's the thing. You yeah, I bet out. they got that i your iCloud storage is full. No, yes. Yeah. Who who does <laughs> who 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 accomplishes what supposedly or really would be the greatest, if not the greatest, one of the greatest feats in the history of mankind, and they would just destroy all records of how you did it. That's how I may have to listen to the podcast. Including all the footage. Including all the footage of what happened there. Anyway. So America, there you go. We're gonna leave you. And I'm just saying, because I know I know I'm I'm local here in the Houston area. I know NASA. I know you watch this podcast. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking you. Help me out here. Throw me a bone. Yeah, if you want to go, go on Rogan, come on us. Yeah, or or Dave and Juan at protonmail.com. Right, right. right. We'll give you an open platform. Hit us up. Show us how he went to the moon. I don't want to be that guy. Show me. Show me how I went to the moon. All right. We got to get out of here, y'all. The buffet has been laid before you. We got to push the, push the button. Boom. We're gone. Hope it's hope it didn't hit the space station or one of the various satellites up there. And it somehow stored and it's coming back down to you. Uh I told it you landed before. on the moon. If you want to reach us, it's Dave and Juan at ProtonMeal.com. You can do that anytime you want. Um, all these I'm other here. places. Yeah, you found us. Wherever you at now, re- you know, rinse, repeat. Next time, you can you can find us there. Every week, we tell you, hmm. not a suggestion, not a hint. Nope. We're not implying nope. jack nope. squat. It's a freaking oh, it's a freaking mandate. mandate. Get out there and go for it, y'all. Live your best life. Who else is going to do it? Who else is going to do it? You sitting around waiting for somebody to live your best life for you? Yeah. Stop that. Look, man, if you're looking for something, I, I'm not sure it's this coming weekend, but it's soon the Thibodeau Volunteer Fire Department Fair. Come on. Now you got that. Been a long time, but I heard they got good burgers. There you go. So that that's coming. Well, when we know more, we'll we'll uh, we'll share more. Or go on LaFoucheGazette.com. I'm sure they're going to cover that. <laughs> the Courier or whatever. Shout out to all of them. Uh, but, yeah. It is what it is. So I hope all you guys have a fantastic week. And I'm going to Orlando. I'll give you some feedback oh, on that when I'm going to Disney. Going... No, 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 no. Not even staying at a Disney property. I, I don't even know where I'm going. Good I'm on staying. you. Yeah, I'm going. So I think they're bringing this play Top Golf during the. I haven't swung a golf club in five years. It's, and not to derail this, but then I think we've talked about this. Yeah, I can hit a golf ball. Yeah, from the third floor at Top Golf. Yeah, I made it pretty. Yeah, I can get a decent. You yeah, know, 
b- decent drive on it. May not go straight, but it'll where it don't matter. Yeah, yeah, let me let me hit right. where it, it don't it, matter. It, it ain't nothing like playing golf. No, when I play golf, regular golf, I get to see everybody's yard. I get to yeah. see every, <laughs> if it's like your name. I'd, I'd have found all the new sod, all the new sod they put out there. That's that that, that would have been me. All right, so I'll have a feedback on that later. All right, everybody, y'all have a fantastic week. Love you, bro. Back at you, man. So back to the what? What was the name of the golf course at the? Um... The old white. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe related to that or not. So yesterday, at the, you know, uh, Riley's gone to the same school since kindergarten. So you know, you know a lot of the parents, but not all of the people have been there. So when you go to something like this, you introduce yourself to those you don't as you know, based on your hi, I'm so and so's dad. Um. Uh, so th- this guy comes up to me, um, I'm shooting a boy. He's African-American man. Um, name is Jerome. Uh, the, and I'm not going to say his daughter's name, but, so uh, okay, I introduced yeah. myself to him and he says, Oh, and, and I'm Susie's dad. And then he says, obviously. <laughs> It's over. Go home.